All right, well, this is cool. So, all right, let's go. We're going to have to do this. I'm going to have to give you the, the dreaded infinity screen here in a minute. Um, all right, guys. Well, anyways, Brian Stevens here with the National Real Estate Post and Listing Booster. I have Chris Wright with Guarantee Rate. He's uh, been courteous enough, kind enough to give us, uh, allow us uh, himself to uh, be something of a guinea pig for, for what we're trying to do. So Chris jumped on a webinar uh, where I pulled him out. He might be the only person on it. There's, in fact, there's probably more people now, but it doesn't matter because what I've, what I've discovered about working with, yeah, we got, what I've discovered, my phone's ringing in my head. What I've discovered is it's kind of better when you can kind of talk with somebody and try to work through whatever issues that we're having when it comes to marketing and loans. Uh, the whole idea behind this webinar that we're doing is called Get Leads. And so we've got our total canned way to get leads with the Listing Booster Slant, for which we may end up doing here. But I want to see if we can kind of tailor that to exactly what Chris is looking for in terms of his personal business. And hopefully that other people can glean information from this as well. So super cool. Chris, just real quickly, why don't you tell us um, where you're from and how long you've been in the business for? We're here in uh, Amman, Oklahoma. So basically, we're in Oklahoma State. Okay. Did you get hit with any hurricanes last night? Oh, uh, <laughs> we don't have hurricanes in Oklahoma. I mean, not hurricanes, excuse me, tornadoes? No, we didn't get in Oklahoma last night. So. So, I think down in Arkansas and Alabama, Alabama, they got pounded. Yeah, it was Alabama. Okay, um, all right, so um, what is it we can help you with? When you jumped on for getting leads, What what is it? Is there anything in particular that you could put words on, or do you want me to start uh, going? Is there anything specific? Not really. I mean, I'm just kind of more of, like I told you, I was checking into this just to see how the service worked more than anything. Okay, cool. Then let's, uh, let's jump into this with a slant for getting leads. So... Okay. All right, so here's my thinking, guys, and I've said this again a million times. If you've watched any of my webinars, you kind of understand uh, uh, my position. I try to distill things down to their simplest components and kind of build our way back out from there. So, you know, the idea is to have a more successful business. How do we do that? We close more deals. How do we do that? We have more clients. How do we do that? We get more leads. How do we do that? How do we do that? How do we do that? So, really, if we're going to distill everything that we need to do as a mortgage loan officer or a real estate agent, uh, in terms of lead generation, conversion, and closings, we can we can we can basically we basically have two things that we need to look at. We have to build an audience, and we have to compel them into an action. It's really all it comes down to. Um, that's with any form of marketing. You have to have an audience that you can sell to, and then if you have somebody who agrees to whatever it is you're selling, in our case, in our case, it's mortgages and money. You have to give them a uh, easy means to um, communicate with you, okay? So they hear what you're saying, they like what you're saying, they like what you have, they like your product, and then you have to have a way for them to engage you. Now, if you're on a car lot, you're talking to the person. If you're calling them, you're speaking to the person. But a lot of marketing that's being done right now is being done online. And, um, you know, that's, you know, go work. if you want to catch a lot of fish, go where the fish are. Where the fish, the fish are online. We know that. All right, so now we think when people are online, people do one of two things. They either consume information, okay, or they create information. The vast majority of people are consumers of information, not creators. So, you, I mean, you, you know, I mean, I'm, social media kind of dumbs it down for everybody to where everybody can put a post up. So you are technically creating information. You're creating content. But when we're thinking of social media platforms, a lot of the content that's being created is super, super dumbed down. I, I don't think anybody would disagree with that. You know, I had teriyaki chicken for dinner last night. Awesome. You know, cool. Um, but things, when we, when we uh, do any time of marketing, we want to create content, not consume content. We want to create content that's valuable, entertaining, or enriching. Okay? With a caveat that anything now that is valuable, entertaining, or enriching has to have some form of lead capture, an easy, effective form of lead capture. So in our case... Um, the marketing piece that we have with Listing Booster is going to be the single property websites with the idea that people like to buy homes. You know, somebody goes like car shopping, they go house shopping. They don't, no one goes mortgage shopping. People go car shopping and then they get a, a mortgage as a consequence of, hap, of getting a house. It kind of comes with the territory. Nobody ever goes to a car lot and says, I don't want to see the cars. I want to talk more, you know, uh, loans. It, it doesn't happen. So if we accept the fact that people are excited about homes, then what we have to do is we have to market homes, not loans. That's the that is if there was ever one phrase, uh, phrase that 
uh, really uh, encompasses or encapsulates what Listing Booster is, is people are excited about homes, not loans. Um, Chris, do you, you would, would you agree with that? People are more interested in homes and loans. You're going to catch more fish that way? Okay, cool. So now if I'm going to go into my Listing Booster account, the one thing about Listing Booster that is going to work to your advantage is going to be the fact there's two things on here. Um, the first one is, is that everything that we have on Listing Booster has some component of lead capture on it. Okay, And in fact, I find this kind of odd, but I think we're still, to this day, I think we're like the only type of platform that markets properties that has active lead capture on them. And I can't even, I can't think of a circumstance where I would market a property, particularly as a loan officer, especially as a loan officer, that doesn't have lead capture. I mean, what's the point? Like, you're in the business of closing loans, not selling somebody else's listing. Uh, it, it just has never made sense to me. So let me explain what that looks like. So I'm logged into my Listing Booster account here, and we've, uh, we've made this look like an old tablet. This, I mean, it's, let's, be, let's just call it for what it is. This is not the prettiest dashboard you've ever seen. It's, it's definitely outdated looking. It's, the dashboard on Listing Booster is the last thing that we haven't gone and cleaned up. I mean, this still looks like it's eight years old. Uh, but we'll, you know, we'll square the corners and make it prettier for you. Uh, but its functionality, it's, it's kind of like we got the frame, we got the frame in the, you know, of the car, but we put a whole new engine and chassis and shocks and all that stuff in it, so it runs a lot better. Okay, so from my listing booster account, I'm going to go in here as my agents. So this is specifically on lead generation. So the assumption is you already have the listings in here, Chris, and there's great easy strategies for that as well. So think about the real estate agent referral partners that you currently have or whose business you covet. Those are the agents who you're going to have in your listing booster account. And some of those agents have listings. So then when you have a listing booster account, you can go ahead and market those listings. And that's all listing booster is. Don't overthink it. That's all it is. So when I say market, the only thing we're going to do is we just want to put a house that's for sale in front of an audience, remember, get the audience, compel them to an action. We want to get the house in front of as many people as humanly possible who could possibly buy what your, um, the, the property that you're, you're looking at and would need a loan for that. So what does it look like? I'm going to give you a working example. This is super easy and super cool. So these are the agents in the account. These are all fictitious agents. However, these 11,327 leads, these are all real leads. These are people who have actually bid on our bait, our single property websites, where we've captured their information. These are 11,327 people who wanted to get more information on a house that does not exist and is not for sale. And I'll show you what that looks like. What a great problem to have, right? Okay, so here's the listings of that one agent. So we've got... 679 All Streets, 1111 Main Street, 123 Any Damn Street, and 100 Paradise Cove. So, you can't? Oh, okay, hold on, all right. Um, my bad, guys, hang tight. Okay, now you should be able to see my screen. Thank you, Lena. Okay, so... Here's the properties inside a listing booster that a loan officer would have with one of their agents. So this agent has one, two, three, four listings. Now, you'll notice that these are text codes that are auto-assigned to the properties right here. One, two, three, four. So when your agent gets a listing and uploads it to their multiple listing system, listing booster, it's going to sweep your MLS every hour of every day. Um, and so what we do is within the hour of that agent pulling or putting their property in a multiple listing system, Listing Booster will identify that uh, listing and you and the real estate agent. And then Listing Booster is going to pull all that information on that listing out of the multiple listing system and generate a whole bunch of marketing pieces. And one of the things that they're going to do is they're going to assign a text code to that listing. So if you were to text on this one, for example, move 4010 to the number 878787, you would get a whole bunch of information on this property and it would be co-branded to the real estate agent and the loan officer. So for a consumer to pick up their phone, if they were to see a marketing piece of this house and they said, yeah, I wanna see that house, 
So they text 878787 and their message is move 4010 and then they hit go. That consumer is now going to have a whole bunch of information on their phone with videos and everything else branded to the real estate agent and the loan officer right there. Um, but at the same time, simultaneously, is that loan officer and real estate agent are going to get the phone number from that phone that just requested the information from the consumer. And this all happens in real time. So the consumer asks for the information, they get it right away, and then the loan officer and the real estate agent, they're going to get pinged within like two seconds of that. Um, somebody did it. I can hear it on my head right now. Um, so somebody is going, so the loan officer would then be able to, or the real estate agent would be able to call that real estate agent immediately. Okay, so let's see a great and easy way to market this. So here's these four properties, and this is super sick, Chris. This is where Listing Booster, there's just nothing like it. All right, so I'm going to go to my marketing pieces here. Okay, so I'm clicking this button, Marketing, and then I'm going to go to my Craigslist flyer. I'm going to show you just two ways to generate leads. So now what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to download a picture of that property. So I'm going to pull from Listing Booster an image of that property. But the cool thing is Listing Booster is going to take that house and they're going to embed the text code that's unique to the property into the image. Now we do this because back in the old days, like Craigslist and stuff, they wouldn't want you to like put your phone number, text messages. And so we figured when, if you can embed it into the picture, they can't see it. And so we could, we could, so it was a workaround. And it just so happens it works great for what we're doing with Listing Booster. So you saw it within a couple of seconds here, Chris. I've got a property that's for sale. I have a unique short code that's assigned to that property. And I have this on my desktop. It's right here. Okay. So if I were to go, for example, over to Facebook and I was to go bloop, over here to my home. And this, they just changed this recently in Marketplace, and this is so cool. I mean, this is so cool. So I'm going to go to Marketplace. I'm going to click this button. It says Marketplace. And I'm going to sell something. I look at a lot of bikes online and fishing poles and houses. So you'll see like a lot of that mixed in here because... Facebook knows what I'm trying to buy. So I'm going to sell something, okay? So I just click sell something. The process, through the process of elimination, Chris, I'm going to sell an item for sale because it's not a house for rent. It's not a vehicle, so it's an item for sale. Then I'm going to sell a, I have my pull downs here. Um, I'm going to lift this up. Ah. Uh, it should say it on here. Do you see a, where is it? What was that, Chris? Property. Is it? Oh, here we go. Okay, property for sale. Now, I'm going, this doesn't cost me any money to do, and it only takes a couple seconds. So what am I selling? Uh, greatest house in all of Ackerville. Uh, you now, you might say, would I put this in here? I told, Chris, I would put that in there. Because, because I'm going to post another one today, another one tomorrow, because it only takes me a couple seconds to do. And I'm more interested to see how people behave to, with my posts. So if I put down the property address, you know, maybe more people hit on that. Maybe they hit on the greatest house in Vacaville. Maybe on one of my posts, I'm going to put the bat cave. I mean, I, it just doesn't, honestly, it doesn't matter. It, because more people might say, hey, that's funny, and then look at the house and say, boy, I'm really interested in that house. And then they're going to pick up their phone. All I'm trying to do from a loan officer's perspective is I want somebody who's thinking about buying a house to pick up their phone and text that code. That's what I'm, I'm not trying to sell the house. I'm trying to get somebody who wants to buy a house. The house is just a conduit between me and that buyer. So I would, I would, I would be more inclined to like experiment with different terms for the property. My sales price, $1. And then it's already in Vacaville, California. Or you could change it, but whatever. Back of where I live. Now I'm going to upload a photo. I'm only going to, Chris, I'm only uploading one photo. And the reason I'm only going to upload one photo is because I believe in actually withholding information. You know, and this is, uh, this is we kind of zig when everyone zags. Like, the whole real estate and lending community is all about provide more information. Oh, there's great information on these single property websites. I'm of the opinion 
the more information that you give, the more you take away any incentive for that person to reach out to you. So for my purposes as a loan officer, content is king, but it's the content I withhold. It's not the content I share. Okay, so I believe I get more people to reach out from withholding information than giving it up all up on the first date. So one picture for my purposes suits me just fine. If you want to add more pictures, by all means do it. And do it and check to see what you get more hits on. If you want to upload five pictures, upload five pictures. You can totally mess around with it and watch your analytics. That is so like just, it's just something that people don't do enough. All right, so now I'm going to go to next. Now here's what's cool. Okay, so now Chris, if I hit that post button right now, this is going to post in Marketplace on Facebook. Now, Marketplace on Facebook, in my local area, in every area, there's probably only five, six houses posted per day. Like, nobody uses it. I just think about that for a second. You have a platform that people don't use for marketing where there's a ton of eyeballs on it. So that means, Chris, if you post in your market, you don't, your marketing piece does not have to compete against a whole bunch of other lenders and real estate agents putting other properties up there because this is totally underutilized. So now build an audience. Well, your audience becomes the people in your area who are on Marketplace and Facebook. Your conversion ratio goes up because not a lot of people use this Marketplace on Facebook. But you see, yours will stand out because your property now has a unique text code specific to each and every property that you have on your post. So now somebody can hit you up through Instant Messenger, and if they don't want to do that, they can pick up their phone and they can hit that text code. Okay, and when they do that, you capture the number. So what is my audience? My audience are the people on Marketplace. Build an audience, compel them to do something. How do I compel them to do something? I've added a text code unique to, the, unique to that property into the picture. Now, what I know, Chris, is people are more inclined to text for information than call you. Because, dude, nobody wants to talk to you in when it comes to marketing. No one wants to talk to me. No one wants to talk to anybody. So when people are online, I've always said this, it's very voyeuristic. You know, people go online, they're, 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 they're consuming information. They don't want to talk to somebody. They want to consume information. So what we've done with our text codes is, is we've given people a way to consume additional information and not have to haggle with talking to us. And what we've learned over here is that we get a higher conversion ratio. In fact, we, get, we end up compelling more people to do it with a text code than a phone number. So a text code is a superior form of lead conversion, prospect to um, potential client. But here's what's really cool about Facebook now. So um, Facebook, or when I go to Marketplace, I could go ahead and post right now but notice what Facebook says. Facebook says, oh, Brian, would you like to take that property and would you like to market it in any, on any other group sites? So like, let's say I click this right here, ready? I'm going to click the buy, sell trade. Vacaville, California, buy, sell trade, right there. So now it'll also syndicate to that side. Oh, let's go to homes and lands for sale. Let's go to Dixon Homes for rent because people who rent should buy. Let's go to Bay Area Homes for sale. Let's go homes and items for sale. And every button I'm clicking, let's go to cheap houses, what the hell. Every, these are all groups that I've joined for every one of the California marketplace. I mean, I can click any of these, okay. Now, most of these are, are in our area, Solano Best Treasures. Okay, so now all these ones that I clicked, Chris, so now I've just clicked, I'm not only gonna post this property on the marketplace, I'm gonna post it into this group, this one, this one, this one, you get the idea. Now what I want to do is I'm going to show you something that I think is pretty great. Vacaville, California, buy, sell, trade. I don't even, to be honest, dude, I don't even know what I'm going to look at here, but I, it, it's probably going to be pretty good. Okay, so let's go Vacaville, California, buy, sell, trade. Let's see if it pulls up. Oh, look at that's not a very good group. Hold on. Let's go to groups. That's not the right one either. Okay. Vacaville, California, buy, sell, trade. Um, how many people are in this group? This might be the group. I don't think this is the group that I'm in. 
because it said I had to join it. All right, let's see, 61 members, and I'm not a member of this one. Let's try this. Um, homes and land for sale by owner. Barry homes for sale. Let's see how many are in this group. Barry homes for sale. All right, let's try that. Okay, so this is the group that I'm in on this one. This group has 11,607 members. So it's going to automatically post in here. So by clicking this one button, I've just added a potential 11,000 additional people who are going to see that post. That's bigger than your database, dude. That's bigger than any loan officer's personal database. Like every button I click here, and this I knew this going in, but... Every one of these groups probably has more people in it than you have in your past client database. So not only is Marketplace going to be in front of more people than your database, but every one of these clicks is probably represents individually some, a, a database larger than what you currently have. I mean, the numbers are astounding. They're nuts. So now I'm posting it, and, you, and by the way, you can go to up to 10 groups here, okay? So I could go to 10 groups here. Now, if I hit post right now, my picture of that property with where it's at in Vacaville, California, announcing that it's for sale, withholding information on it with a very easy way to engage texting that is specific to that property that creates leads and phone numbers for you and your real estate agent partner, are literally going to be in front of 80,000 people. I mean, the numbers are astounding. And the whole thing takes me two minutes, and it doesn't cost me one dime. So if I hit post here, the question you have to ask yourself is, if this is in front of 70,000 people, do you think anyone's going to pick up their phone who's thinking about buying a house and text it? And, I mean, the answer is yes. It's not if they're going to do it. It's really how many people are going to do it. And if I hit post there, I'd probably get 100 people right now before the day's over I, who would pick up their phone. I'd have a list of 100 people to call. Now, are those all leads? No, they're not. We both know that. So who's going to, who is going to take this JPEG when I put it in front of 70,000 people? And by the way, homes for sale, homes for rents, homes for something, great deals on homes in groups that are tailored towards what I'm talking about, how many people are going to hit it and who's going to hit it? I'd say probably 100. All right, so let's think about it. Who's going to, who's going to bite? Who's going to hit on my bait? You'll have people who are truly interested in that house. That's awesome. You will have real estate agents who are competitors who are going to hit it up. For a loan officer, that one's pretty good because – if you find yourself calling a lead and it turns out to be a real estate agent, congratulations, you're on the phone with a real estate agent who you probably don't know and you might as well use that as an opportunity to get them into your listing booster account and see if they have any deals you can work. So I'm going to say that one's good, but most loan officers miss that opportunity, which is mind-boggling. Then you're going to have uh, just looky-loos, you know, people in the group who are looking and they're not thinking about buying. They're not good. And then you're going to have and if you put like a, if you take this text code and put this on a sign writer in front of the house, you could also get like neighbors, you know, nosy neighbors, and that's not good. So two are not good, two are good. Okay, that's basically what you're going to get. Everybody falls into one of those uh, categories. Now, of the two good ones, the real estate agent is, you know, future business for an astute, smart loan officer, but not really a deal right there. So if we have four and they're all equal components and I got 100 leads, that means 75 are crap, 25 are good. Or 25 are people who are thinking about buying a house. Now, if somebody is hitting on this who's considering buying a house, they might want to buy tomorrow. They might want to buy six months from now. We don't know. So Listing Booster creates the leads, the opportunities for the loan officer. Um, it's incumbent upon the loan officer to then identify the people who are interested in buying what you're selling, that's being money, and staying in front of them long term. So we have a whole bunch of strategies on this, but that's, that's kind of what you're looking at.
Um, and I think that that's a pretty good that's a pretty good deal for a loan officer and a real estate agent because there's a million different CRMs that you can plug people into if you want to. We've we've got strategies if you go to an, any of our webinars. It's a pretty good gig. But here's the here, I don't want this lost on you, man. Is like if you have a real estate agent who you and you're promoting a listing for that agent, and I just showed you how to very quickly, very easily pick up 25, 50, 75 leads. Okay, what you're doing is you can now take that list. Like if I hit this post right now, I could go talk with a real estate agent who has this listing and say, hey, Bob, this is Chris over here at Guaranteed Rate. Yeah, um, hey, I got a, I got 100 hits on your, uh, your new listing that you got. And uh, these are 100 actual real live phone numbers. And I want to sit down and have a conversation with you how, how we should approach this together. Because there's no, lo there's no real estate agent in the country who's got loan officers who are doing this for them. Now, Chris, if you did what I just told you and you called up that real estate agent, I would go walk my ass over to that real estate agent's office, say, okay, so I'll meet you tomorrow at your office. And I would go walk in there and I would have a fistful of my Chris Guarantee rate cards. And as I'm walking back to talk with that real estate agent, I would print up those 100 leads and I'd have my card here. And as I'm walking back to that real estate agent's office, I would go talk with every real estate agent on the way back to their cubicle. I'd say, hey, how are you doing? Chris from Guaranteed Rate, which by the way, if you're not catching this, these are all best practices for a loan officer. Talking to real estate agents, visiting real estate agents, having a call to action, generating opportunities, creating value. All good stuff has happened. We haven't even got to a transaction yet. So as I'm walking back to that real estate agent's uh, office, I'm gonna talk, hey, Sally, how you doing? Brian Stevens here. I'm over here talking to Bob. Yeah, I got a list of, uh, we did some marketing together. I got a list of 100 leads. These are phone numbers uh, that I actually pulled uh, from a, somebody's cell phone who expressed interested, interest in one of Bob's new listings over here. So I got to go take his 100 leads that we generated yesterday right here over to Bob. And then I would hand my card to that agent and say, you know, me and you should do the same thing too. And then I would say that to every agent in the office. And, and just let, I would announce to the whole office that I am generating value, leads, closings, listing opportunities for this real estate agent from a loan officer. Because you then become the guy wearing a red hat and a sea of black hats. Um, that's what I would do. And then I would sit down and I would talk to that real estate agent about lead conversion and um, how you want to approach this. So imagine... Chris, if you spent, I mean, I don't know, five minutes of your time and you did two posts, three posts a day for three different agents, how many leads do you think, lead opportunities do you think you'd be able to generate? Well, you know, the funny thing is, is that uh, if I go to my listing booster account, where is it? Oh, right over here. If I go back to my listing booster account and I go pull up my leads here, um, again, the funny thing is, see this guys right here? It says 500, six, I can't read that without my glasses. 500 or 600? 679, okay. Uh, web leads on this right here. And then uh, if I go over to my text leads here, I've got an additional, this, oh, by the way, the text leads are what we got. Here's the actual phone numbers. Check it out, 11,321. So these are real phone numbers. Here's the real dates on it. This one was from March 4th. Somebody hit this thing today. Oh, this is probably my webinar right now I'm doing. Somebody's watching this and hitting it. Um, you can see right there, 3-1. And I can go back. There are literally 11,000 people who wanted to get information on a, on a fictitious listing. What I did here, too, too by the way, Chris, is I took my 11,000 leads and I just downloaded these um, as a CSV file. So I just as we're talking right now, I'm doing this. So um, what I can do is I can pull up here, as you'll see in a second. And here they are. Here's all their numbers. So there's 11,000 of them here. Uh, again, if they, I can do this with a fake account, do you think maybe with a couple extra seconds of work, we could really dial this bad boy in where you work? The answer is emphatically yes. So now, Chris, I just told you, and again, I think honesty is the best approach. I hate people who just like, you know, just are always just blowing bullshit out of their mouth. You know, I just told you right now, three out of these four leads are going to be suspect. 
on a list that you can generate. It's still better than anybody can do. Anybody in the country, because we, we generate a list by the thousands per account, per person, all the time. Uh, and these are all real people triggering on real houses that are working with real estate agents that are really in your listing booster account in your market. That's a fact. And there's very few systems and strategies and products in place that will do this. But I, I get frustrated with two things. First of them is, is there's, it's like, I put the marketing, we put the marketing piece out there, and so we can build an audience, we can compel them to do what we want them to do. That's very specific about buying houses. We've learned, we've just, we've got that thing covered. Um, but what we're really kind of doing here is we're kind of fishing with a trolling net. So, like, um, you know, we're, 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 we're trolling for dolphins, but our nets catch and sharks, or we're trolling for uh, tuna, but our nets are catching sharks and dolphins in the process. So we started looking at, well, how can we go ahead and make this uh, a little bit better? So I want to show, show you what we've learned how to do. And here's another example, Chris, of how you can generate leads with Listing Booster. And again, we are so far ahead of everybody else in the country at effective lead generation and conversion. It's, it's ridiculous. So this is really cool. Check this out. So good lists, some bad stuff. Now, I'm going to go in here back to my Listing Booster account, and I want to show you something. I'm going to go to manage my listings again, and I'm going to go back. Here's the real estate agent's property. So this is the same one. Okay. So I'm going to go to my marketing pieces here, and I want to show you a sample of our single property websites. All right. So here's our single property website right here. Okay. So we do something here that I think uh, I told you that not to do. I, so when I started this webinar, I said, hey, let's look at my face. I got a picture of me here, which is awesome. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we give away the house. Like our single property websites, we tell you what the highest rated Yelp restaurants are around the house, the distance. These are hyperlinked. So people could find like the best restaurants and check out all the reviews on Yelp, where to go shopping for things and how to deal with cars, maintenance and shit like that. So we've got like, and then of course it's, it's our single property websites are um, branded to the loan officer and the real estate agent. So we give away the schools, flyers, maps, videos, you name it. You got it all. But here's, here's what makes this different is by the time a consumer is looking at this, you have already captured that person's information. So what we do is we put in front of this, we put lead capture. So when you post this property, so if I were to go into one of those groups, so let me, I'm going to lose this. There's a better way to do it, but I'm going to grab this URL, command C, and I'm going to go, and if I go to one of my Vacaville groups, like you have your groups, like Vacaville Crime and Community, I wouldn't post it here, but I'm just, you get the idea. Okay, so if I put my property in here, which again, I'm doing this in real time. This just takes seconds. Okay. Um. Here's the picture, here's the text code. Now, if I put my description on here and put this in the group and I publish it, somebody's going to see on the Vacaville Crime and Community Group, they're gonna see this single property website and they're gonna say, hey, I wanna, I wanna see this house. I might put up here a racist, I might say, check out this new listed home in Vacaville. It's totally badass. Buy it before it goes, because it will. And again, I, I'm, I'm much, I, Chris, I'm much more comfortable. I would actually post like this because this is how I talk. Um, what I would not do is I would not say, look at this beautiful home with this amazing front yard, and, because that's what everybody says. And you sound like, you sound like a, a sales schmuck when you put stuff up like that, I think. You know what I mean? It's like, and then, you know, when people have, people will post and they'll use words describing houses that have no meaning, you know, and, and again, you know, I've said this a million times, you know, look at the amazing front yard. It's like, no, the front yard's not amazing. Grand Canyon's amazing. The front yard's pretty nice. You know, it's, so I, I, I hate how people use superlatives when describing, you know, the mundane. So I think it's better to just post by saying, talking how you would talk and however it is you talk. 
It just makes more sense to me because people don't want to be sold, but everyone wants to buy. Jeffrey Gittimer 101. But now if I were to go down here and post this, what happens is, is if somebody wants more information on this house, they have to, one, pick up their phone and text MOVE4010 to 878787, as you see right here. Or the other thing they would have to do is click on the post to get to the single property website, this thing. But what happens is if a consumer were to click on this, it would pull up the, the post like this, but then it would gray it out. And it would say, in order to see the house, you have to log in with Facebook or give me your email. And because it's on Facebook, most people are going to click Facebook. And then Listing Booster is going to pull that future home buyer's information from their Facebook account. And it's going to land in your account and your real estate agent's account. So by the time they look at this, you've already got two forms of effective lead capture in front of them. You have the, te you have the text code, uh, which is right here on your post. You have your lead capture from your single property website. And then I don't know if you noticed this pull up down here, Chris, but this is also something nobody else does but us. Because again, all we think is lead capture, lead gen, conversion, close deals. That's how we, that's what we do. Okay, so what happened down here is this popped up. And this will happen on all your single property websites. And I don't know anybody who does this. So what happens is, is we've put a chat box not a bot, but we put a chat box on here. So now my chat box here, Chris, if I click on this, like I as a consumer can go ahead and ask, uh, tell me how many bedrooms. And if I send this, what I'm doing right now is I'm actually sending myself a message because I had this set up on my phone, okay? And I've funneled all the chat boxes, not bots, but boxes to where I can respond to for all my listings over to my phone. Okay. So as I'm going through my day, somebody chats me up. I can just take my phone and say, uh, oh, yeah, so you're talking about the house with the pool in front of it? Oh, that one's really cool. That house is right around the corner from uh, Murillo's. Uh, and by the way, Murillo's is a Mexican restaurant here in Vacaville. So when I respond by saying that's right next to Murillo's, I'm letting people know I'm a real person in Vacaville who's responding to them. I'm turning it into an instant messenger, and I'm putting them on notice that this is not an automated response. You're actually talking to a real person. So what's going on? Tell me about yourself. So it's got me an engagement. Now, here's the cool thing about a chat box. B-O-X, not a bot. The chat, the chat, the bot is, is going to have the automated responses. It's a robot. People know robots. Robots suck. Nobody wants to talk to one. People want to know they're actually talking to another person, but this... Having a chat box keeps their anonymity in place. So somebody can go ahead and chat me up and get their information, um, but they don't have to talk to me. So conversion goes up, and that's a huge component. Now, the cool thing is, Chris, is you can actually have your chat box enabled or disabled on all your listings with all your agents, and they can all funnel directly to you or somebody who's sitting in your office. With your chat box, Chris, remember I told you with the other form of leads? You got your neighbors, looky-loos, real estate agents, and then people actually really interested in the house. So one great, one good, two bad. The only people who are hitting you up on chat boxes are people who are actually interested in the property. So your chat box eliminates the looky-loos, the neighbors, the real estate agents, and you are left with people who are, have a higher probability of buying what you're selling, and that's mortgages and homes. So the chat box actually gets you um, a higher quality of lead. Now, the thing is you have to man it. You have to actually have somebody responding to it because if you let it sit there, it's pointless. And the cool thing is, <coughs> you saw how I pulled up my face down there? On my chat box, what I did was, when I was screwing around with this, is I can have anything as an image show up as my chat box. So I was screwing around with like, what shows up more? You could put text down there. You could put images down there. You could put whatever you want pop up, okay? So on our single property websites, you have a mobile component text code on every property that shows up on your post. You have lead capture. It pulls everybody's information from Facebook when they look at that property. And then you have a live, an, an instant messaging platform with a chat box on every property that funnels those all to one specific pre-designated area, area of your choice. And again, I like those leads the best. And I also like it because nobody else is doing this. So you start marketing 
online in your local market and you start doing things, Chris, that are transformatively different than any real estate agent, okay, or any other lender in your market, and what uh, unintended benefit of these activities are is that other real estate agents are going to see what you're doing and they're going to want to learn what you're doing and it's going to create more opportunities with referral partners through the activity outside of any lead generation it's going to create activity for you with referral partners by virtue of the fact that you're doing something that nobody else in the country is doing now remember when I showed you where I was gonna post this property Chris I was gonna post it over here and I all I have to do is hit post and I'm up and running so this only takes seconds if I were to post that that post would go in front of 30,000 people who are in Vacaville, California. So how powerful would that be to have a, a, a live instant messaging chat box, uh, um, a um, lead capture added to the single property website along with a text code? If it seems like a little bit of overkill, probably is, but you can turn any of it off if you want to. But you've got three fail-safe forms of redundancy on your single property websites. And I'm telling you right now, like if you look at, I'm serious, look at this. Anybody else's single property websites anywhere in the country, anywhere, look at them all. Just when you go through your social sites, nobody has any one of the three things that I told you about. None of them. What everybody has on single property websites, if any form of lead capture, is a real estate agent's phone number. They have a, a phone number. Now, my whole thing with phone numbers is like when you think about a, when you think about a phone number, um, let me just see if I can uh, – let me see if I have it here. I don't know. I, I cleaned out my computer yesterday, so I probably like got rid of almost all of my stuff. Oh, when you think when you think about when you think about like when you think about a phone like a uh, technology and a means of communication, like people are using phone numbers. Think of how people use their phones today. Have they evolved? Like people are using phone numbers. That's technology from the 1930s. People don't like to talk on their phone anymore. They would prefer to use other forms of engagement. So as your technology has evolved, our means of communication has evolved, so should your marketing. And as far as I can tell, nobody's doing anything but what we're doing. So, Chris, if you followed what I was just saying, here's what I hope your takeaway would be, is that if you were to spend 15 minutes marketing uh, with the strategies I just showed you, with the various forms of lead capture that I just showed you that only takes you seconds, you'll generate hundreds of leads per week. The, the real question that you should be asking yourself is, how do I convert them? How do I get the most bang for my buck out of this? But when it comes to getting leads, I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous how, how easy it is. So those two strategies there alone are insane. Now, do me a favor, Chris. I want you to think, tell me why you think this is not a good idea, and I mean that seriously. Like, what, do, what don't you like about it? I would like to address that. That's more interesting than what you do like about it. Because I, from, my, from my side of the table, I'm just like, it doesn't cost you money, it doesn't cost you time. Why wouldn't you do, why wouldn't everybody do this? And a lot of people don't. So if you can give me some objections, it would actually, I'm serious too, it would help me understand why more loan officers aren't doing this. It's just too easy not to do. As far as I can tell, but maybe I'm missing something. Maybe I'm not seeing the forest through the trees. Right. Well, the other part of it is, is it's an ad. Like when I go through my Facebook page, I I know what the ads are. We everybody knows when they go to Google, you don't hit the first three links because they're paid ads. People don't want ads. I know when I go through here, as I start scrolling through my Facebook crap, it tells me sponsored. Whenever I see something that's sponsored, I just cruise right over it. I I never, I never go to it. So I think I actually think that this works better than an ad. I, because it's not an ad. Oh, and let me tell you, I, I want to tell you this one other thing, Chris. I think this is really interesting. So you're looking at my Facebook right now. I'll, speaking of ads, check this out. So everybody, got, guys, right now, you're just looking at my personal Facebook page right now. Now, look what's over here on the right-hand side. Look at this right here. Still available on Marketplace. 
It knows I'm in Vacaville. It knows I look at houses in Vacaville. And because Facebook wants to bury Craigslist, look what they're, look what they're giving me. Facebook is literally giving me paid ad space without having to pay a dime by using Marketplace. You notice this? When, what it's showing right now live on my Facebook wall is what I'm searching. I search houses because I do this a lot. So for other people who are looking at houses on Facebook, they treat your postings like a paid ad. Now, check this out, Chris. You see this right here? See that text code? See that text code? See that text code? These are all listing booster people in my market. So I have right now, they're getting free paid advertising space because they're posting in Marketplace like I showed them. So this is yet another unintended benefit. They're going to take your postings that I just showed you and they're not only going to put them on Marketplace and put them in those groups, they're going to treat them like paid ads and they're going to keep them in front of people because Facebook wants more people to engage Marketplace. So they're, they've got like a throw-in for you right now, which is even like better. You get all the advantages of the paid advertisements without paying. Um, you know, I wouldn't do that if I were you. And, and the reason is this, is that if you're, um, you know, it would take you five, ten minutes a day to post a couple. And, I, you know, any, any type of logging in and dealing with automation um, is going to take you the same amount of time. And you're going to, you, you literally will generate more leads than you know what to do with. Um, so how, you, you, don't, you don't need the automation. And the only, I have a couple of concerns about automation. One of them is, is that Facebook's always changing their algorithms. And so when you bring any like third party vendors to play, if they start to see that you've got some form of automation at play that's not Facebook sanctioned, they tend to suppress that at some point. So you could buy a product today that could be suppressed a month from now. And so that always, I get wary about that. The other thing is, is that if you're going to use any type of um, uh, automation with postings to multiple sites, you could do it too frequently, and if you do that, they could put you in Facebook prison where they don't let you post anything. And because you can get all the opportunities you want from what I'm showing you how to do, I actually think you're better off just waking up in the morning, stretching, spend two minutes while you're having a cup of coffee, post a couple of properties in the morning, and check them at lunch. And if you do that, you'll have 100 leads a day, 50, 75 leads a day. I, and that you're going to have more leads than you know what to do with, as it is. You're not going to need another... Um, platform for it. What about LinkedIn? Uh, you could certainly go ahead. You know, LinkedIn is, is pretty interesting to me. Um, like we use, a lot of people use LinkedIn for recruiting. Uh, a lot of people use it for their videos. People engage LinkedIn really, really well. It's an, it's an underutilized platform. My only misgivings about using LinkedIn as a platform is a lot of what's going on there uh, tends to be more business to business, people looking for jobs, people looking to recruit. But you could do the same thing with LinkedIn. So, for example, if you were to take your, uh, your URL here, like on your single property website and post this on LinkedIn, it would still have the lead capture components in place on it. Um, the only thing that it wouldn't have at this point is it would not have the chat box as I showed you just because we haven't written any code for that one yet. Yeah, it's right now with Listing Booster, it will sync out to all of those. So if I go to my single property websites um, and I look at all my opportunities, here's where you can go ahead and post it too. So, you know, so it's it is literally all over the board. You can pin it to Pinterest. You can stick it on LinkedIn. You can. I don't even know if Google Plus is still around. It's a great platform. It's just too difficult to use. So yes, you can go ahead and you can blast this out to multiple platforms super, super easily. It's pretty, it's pretty slick. It's, you know, I, I, there's other products that do more stuff that have more content that frankly I don't think helps you in your endeavors because you're not in this to sell a house. You're in this to close loans. They're going to close more houses as a result of your activities. Uh, and I think they'll be able to fulfill their fiduciary real estate agents with our system better. Um, but you're in the business of trying to close more deals, and this is certainly going to create the leads and the opportunities for you to sit down and have those conversations and get them off the fence. Well, I agree. Look at so to, to to show you again, just proof of concept of what we do. I'll just pull up one of my old webinars here. 
Uh, and I've showed this a million times. This is an old screen capture from uh, the back end of Listing Booster. If you look over here, you can even see when I screen captured this, I had a pop-up on my computer. This is the bottom corner of a pop-up. But these are the loan officers. Here's their actual names. These are real people. This is really Robert Carter, Chad Prio, Ed Stoyakovich. You probably know some of these people. Brian Goldman, Nick Carter, Dave Goldberg, Scott Center, uh, Andy Boyum. These are all dudes I know. Um, here's the, how many leads they've generated. And this is about a year and a half later. Look at it, 17,000, 14,000. This is like a year, a year and a half. I mean, these numbers are nuts. And if we were to go down this list, I've got pages and pages of loan officers who are generating five, 6,000 leads every single year. I mean, 500 leads a month is not uncommon. The biggest problem we're having right now is how do you convert them? And that's a much inter more interesting conversation. But for most loan officers who don't have great lead gen capabilities that don't cost them a fortune, like ridiculous sites like Zillow and Realtor.com, uh, we have to get to this point first. Let's get you to the point where you can generate fistfuls of leads, actual people actually interested in real houses in your area, hitting on your actual marketing pieces. And I'd rather start there and get you talking to your referral partners and kind of as a collective working out a strategy on how to convert them because there's so much benefit that comes from you sitting down with your referral partners and saying, all right, here's all the leads. How are we going to work on this and do it as a group? Because you just, you endear yourself to your referral partners and you start to have what I, I call a peer to peer relationship, which is the most important thing for a loan officer in the long term, more so than any lead generation. Well, I agree. Yeah, because Zillow's and uh, lead online leads that you buy, those are just, if not worse, than what we're talking about right here. Totally. They're a lead. But. Totally. You know, the funny thing is, people say, like, well, it's a bad lead. I'm like, so somebody who lives in your neighborhood who's interested in a house for sale, who you captured their information, that's a bad lead? I'm like, really? Are you kidding me? That's, you know, it's a good lead. It, you got you to gotta filter through to find that person, but they're all over the place. And what, uh, like I said, what a great, so, you know, like I said, Greg Peckman over here, you know, he might have 17,000 leads as of this date. And, and what I'm telling you is 75% of them might not buy. So Greg Peckman's, yeah, Greg Peckman's only stuck with 4,000 people who are going to buy. What a bummer. But he's not competing with three or four of the lenders from Zillow either. No, he's not. No. Hey, you know, Greg's closing 20, 30 deals every month. I, I know him really well. That's a, Like I said, that's a, that's a hell of a problem to have. You know, and, and it's just, I don't know. If somebody doesn't see the value in this, then I'm kind of like, well, I hope you got something better. Because right now, as far as I can tell, I don't think there's anything close to this. Especially your lead capture on the uh, Facebook piece. Yep. And, and Facebook... Yeah, there's nothing else that I've ever seen like that. No, dude. And Facebook says, okay, would you like to post this to a whole bunch of groups too? Get it in front of other lists. Build a list. Compel them to action. Sure. Click, 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 click. That's, that's Facebook sanction. Then they're taking those and they're also treating them like paid ads and they're sticking them on the home page of people in your neighborhood who are searching homes. Hey, you've been looking at homes. Here's uh, maybe you want to look at this house. I mean, it's like, it's crazy. It's super crazy. And I, no one's even close to what we're doing right now. So, all right. So, tell me the bad points. What's what's not a good idea about this? What can you can you think of something? I mean, I think of your competitors some bad issues, but that's what I'm trying to sit here. Combining these agent marketing right now, and they don't have what we're talking about. They have none of this. They have none of it. Correct, and that's what I'm, I'm investigating this because I'm I'm wanting to look at switching. You know, I've got to you know tell my agents that are with agent marketing. Well, here's the thing. So this is the big. Here's the, I'll tell you right now. So you just mentioned that. So I just want to address this. There is a different philosophy that we have than agent marketing. So agent marketing is they've got, it's a beautiful site. It's a great product. It really is. Agent marketing has beautiful single property websites and they have so much information and they make it super easy to capture more information from more, to get more uh, listings for more agents. And they load up everything with its content, 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 content. That's like, what they're pushing. And I get it. And I see why it's appealing. 
uh, if, if you don't think it through. And, and, and I'm here to tell you, like, I don't, I would, I would rather withhold information if I thought that they would get more people to engage me. And I believe that to be true. So we will withhold information because I don't, I'm not over there trying to talk about, talk, I'm not, my goal over here from my position, Brian Stevens, my goal is not to try to put an anonymous marketing piece in front of a potential buyer and allow them to make that decision if they're going to buy or not and not communicate with me and withhold any form of communication from me. Well, if you're not going to communicate with me, I don't even care if you see it because I'm, I do loans for a living. And so if you want to get everything you're looking for on that house, you have to give something back in return. And that is the ability to contact you and try to offer you a better loan product or get, get to you before my competitor does. It's all about lead capture. I mean, that's, right. it's just that we have a different philosophy on how to approach things. Well, the only item they have is the text capture. That's the only thing they have. And the problem is that most agents will not utilize it. So unless it's a lender, it's good. If they're not putting their signs out on the property, we're not capturing anything. Yeah, I, I mean, I, they're, they're five years behind us. They're watching my webinars, yeah. too. I'm sure eventually they're going to... They'll eventually catch up and do what we're doing. I have no doubt about it because our results are too great. So, you know, they're, they're watching this. They'll do the same thing we're doing. But by the time they get here, we'll be moving on to something else. <laughs> it's all about closing deals, man. That's, you know, people say, what's the difference between you and other platforms? I just want to close deals. That's the difference. All I, I don't want to sell homes. I want to close deals. We gotta get you signed up, man. Yeah. I mean, we do. And then the other thing that we do, which is cool, is um. Uh, I don't know if I should because everything it's it's all strategies. So, you know, it's you, you know, like I always say, you can buy a lawnmower, but it doesn't mow your grass. You know what I mean? So this is with any technology. Like, there's a you could find you could build a strategy around any product. And they could be different. Some are more effective than others, but it doesn't change the fact that you have to build a strategy. You have to. And um, we just happen to recognize that because everybody who works at Listing Booster, we all have been mortgage loan officers for decades. Every one of us. So we are products put together by, by loan officers for loan officers. And so we always look at it from a loan, loan officer's point of view. And so we know that the strategies are what matter. So if you go to the homepage of Listing Booster, we're constantly running. Every day we do four or five strategy-based webinars, live webinars with me or my partner, Frank. And you can go find out any one of these that you want to do. You can actually even have your real estate agents come over here and jump on these to learn the strategies. You know, getting um, uh, expired, like we have getting expired listings for real estate agents. We are always changing out our webinars because it's all about the strategies. But if you are to click on any one of these, you or your real estate agents, it tells you the dates and times right here, and you can click on any one of these and sign up for it. So I just signed up for this one right here. So, um, and there's no cost or obligation to any of these things for you. So we are we are providing Monday through Friday all day live trainings for you and your agents. And it's just without the strategies, who cares about any of this? None of it matters. And so again, just another benefit that we have over here. We're all, we're all about closing deals. Yeah, what what we so one of my other strategies, Chris. So what we did not talk about today is well, how do you get the realtors to get the listings to do the postings to capture the lead to close the deal? Again, so if if we were to have that conversation. What we do is we will mean you will sit down and talk about scripting, calling, overcoming objections. And one of the things that I always tell lenders is if you're going to go to a real estate agent and you want to get their business, um, I, I always ask them, what, what's your value? Like what makes you different than the fella in the gal to your left and your right of you? You all sell the same thing. You all sell it at the same rate. You all are perfect communicators because you all say the same, you know, I mean, what else are you going to say? My rates are pretty good. My communication's for shit, but um, I got great technology. You know, no one's going to say the truth. 
So understand that when you're talking with realtors, they're, you're, they're hearing, like, you all sound the same to real estate agents. You all have the same pitch, the same line. If it's true or not, doesn't matter. You all say the same thing. So, you know, I tell real estate agents. So if you call a real estate agent, you know, hey, this is Chris over here in uh, Oklahoma City. Just um, I got a great product that's going to generate more uh, leads off the listings you have. I'd like to have a conversation with you. That real estate agent's going to say no to you because it's a sales pitch. They know it. And if I were to call you and, to, and try to sell you something, you would do the, you'd shut me down. And I would shut you down if you called because that's, we are conditioned to shut each other down. I always say when we're talking to the real estate agents, ask them why. And, you know, and, and I say let's be brutally honest. I mean, talk to these real estate agents because here's me. I tell real estate agents when I call them, and I do this with, with loan officers, I say, I think you just said no to me for this reason. I think that you've had so many empty promises from other loan officers that I'm just another voice on the phone and you don't want somebody creating work for you. That's what I think. And they'll all, because I talk to realtors all the time. I'm, I'll be in Albuquerque, New Mexico in a couple of days talking to a group of 500 real estate agents. And when I say this, they always go, yep, that's exactly what happens. I said, yeah, I know. So what I tell loan officers, what you need to tell these real estate agents, Chris, is you say, look, I hate people making work for me and I hate empty promises too. So I'll make you a deal. Here's the deal is if you let me do this and try this, I'll generate 50 leads for you. I'll get you 50 phone numbers of people who are interested, actual people who hit on my marketing piece on your listing. I'll get you their cell phone numbers and I'll deliver those to you three days from now. And if, and only if at that point you say, you know what, Chris, I want to know how you did it. I'll tell you then, but I will never create work for you. If you want to know how I generate leads off of your listings, I will absolutely show you. I'll sit you down. I'll take you to lunch, whatever you want. And I'll show you exactly what it is I'm doing. I'll show you the whole thing, but I will only do that if you want me to show you and you should only ask me ever I, after I've proven to you it works because I don't want to create work for you. Because I hate it when people create work for me. You ever hire somebody and they create more work for you than they're supposed to do themselves? It's like, stop it. And you know, and then when we do this, we can actually start having a conversation with a real estate agent because now you're being more empathetic to their position. And all they want, all anybody wants is to be heard. So, you know, we've got great strategies for working with more agents too. It's overcoming object, like no real estate agent in the country is satisfied with their level of production. If they're great or horrible, they're not satisfied. Now, Chris, I do disagree with you on one thing. I don't, I don't actually, I don't know if you said this, but I don't know if real estate agents, I don't know if it's laziness necessarily. I honestly just think they just don't know what to do. It's the same thing with lenders. It's like no lender got into this job because they wanted to struggle to get by. They wanted to ever, you know, sweat out their car payment. You know, uh, better close this deal. Like nobody gets into this industry to be marginal. And so at somewhere along the line, you just become marginal and you get stuck in a rut. Um, I think if you show agents like how I want to show you how to generate more meaningful relationships with your referral partners and how to generate more leads and how to close more deals, I, I believe like if I can actually show you exactly what to do and exactly what the results are, that I have a higher chance of getting a buy-in than just, you know, blowing smoke up your ass. I, it just makes more sense to me. So take the same approach with real estate agents. You know, what, what are my objections? I don't like people creating work for me. I don't like being sold to. So we've got your scripting, so you, you're not selling to people. And you do have right on your side because when you're telling agents what I told you, you can actually back it up. I, I tell them, that. I, I'd never ask you to do anything. Uh, I'll show you if you ask me after I prove it to you and only if you ask me, but I don't want to create work for you because I hate it when people do it to me. Is that about right? And they always go, yeah, it's pretty much right. You know what I mean? So, you know, our strategies that we have here, with list our implementation with Listing Booster, dude, I mean, soup to nuts, beginning to end, top to bottom, we've got it covered. We we're, Our whole thing is let's put this, let's make this a... Let's just make it a recipe. Just follow the directions. You'll bake the cake. And that's pretty much what we've done. We still got work to do, but we've, we've got this thing dialed in pretty good right now. Sounds good, man.
So you want me to have somebody call you up right now? You want me to get you signed up? Hustle, yeah. Oh, we call her Hustle. Elise, we call her Hustle. Hustle's off. Aw Hustle's awesome. Hustle's totally. You know what I like about Elise? Hustle. We call her Hustle. Hustle totally has my family's back. You know, Elise is this. She's a young gal. She's in her early twenties. She's about this. Hey, can I? Can I? Can I tell your, your? Can I tell your story, Hustle, about being? Can I tell the story about you uh, with a pool ball? Oh God. I gotta tell it now. Okay, this is super funny. Um, what I love about Elise, we call her Hustle because she's just she's she's a grinder. And she's totally got my kids back. Like, she's just a couple years older than my daughter. And I love the fact that she feels an attachment with my daughter. Because if you cross her, Elise will stick a knife in you. <laughs> so, so here's, listen to this. I, Elise has worked here for, like, years. And she is the sweetest human being on the face of the planet. But she's tough. Elise is tough. So she was telling me, she's like, so, yeah. Like, how was your weekend, Elise? And she goes, yeah, well. She, <laughs> she goes, I was down at, what bar was it at? She goes, I was down at the hideaway this weekend. She goes, and I was, um, you know, playing pool with my girls and hanging out. And some guy just kept, like, talking shit to me and saying a bunch of stuff and being a jerk. And so she said something back to some guy. You know, I, drunk conversations at 1 o'clock in the morning at a bar called the hideaway are never a good idea. Uh, but we've all been there. And she says, so we're sitting there. She goes, and uh, she said, so she, she, uh, this guy was being, you know, mean and rude, like, n like not a gentleman, very much not a gentleman. So Elise decided to engage this guy back, and she started um, attacking his manhood uh, in ways that, I guess, uh, made him feel uh, insufficient. And so he did what a lot of drunk guys might do. He decided it was a good idea to hit Elise. So he hauled off. Did he hit you or throw up here in your face? What did he do, Elise? He slapped her across the face. This guy who she doesn't know. So Elise picked up a pool ball from the table and threw it at his face point blank, blank range. And <laughs> broke like his tooth out and like smashed up his face. She goes, then a fight broke out. She goes, and that's when things got real. And I'm like, what? It only got real after the pool ball to the face? The smack. <laughs> I'm like, you know, Elise... This stuff has, nothing like that has ever happened to me in my life, and you're talking about it happening to you a couple days ago, like, I don't know, like it's a trip to the park. <laughs> hustle, man, hustle. She's, she's a grinder. So, yes, anyways, Elise is awesome. That's a true story. <laughs> no, no, we, we, hey, but she's, she's rad. She's awesome. So, so, I'll tell you what, so let's get you, let's get you signed up today. Let's get you. Let's figure out a way to make this work for you. Because here's the deal: if this and now, we, there's no there's no contracts, there's no nothing. And if it doesn't, if you do what we say and it doesn't work for you, um, just quit. I don't want you to. I don't want you to spend one dime on anything that doesn't work for you. you know, there's a lot of people who just won't do this, and we see them all the time. So if you're not going to use it, don't waste your money. We, and frankly, we don't want you. We want people who do stuff because they're way, doers are way more fun to talk to on the phone than complainers. No, no, no. No, Vacaville is um, Vacaville is a cool little town. We're right next to Napa. Um, uh, people recognize the name Napa. We are not Napa, uh, but we're we're close to it. Um, so this here's our little like so. Here's our foothills, uh, like right around here. So on the other side of these hills would be Napa, and so there's lots of vineyards and stuff like that. But this is kind of what this is what Vacaville looks like. It's a nice enough little town. We got a little tiny town. Uh, our office. This is our downtown. Like, if you were point, if you were standing here, you turn around and you walk 50 yards. That's where I'm at right now. So this, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it, it's a podunk little town, uh, but it's my little town. You know what I like about Vacaville is Vacaville feels a lot like, you know, little midwestern towns that you find. So I do a lot of traveling, and we, and I mean, this is our, this is our downtown. So, it's a, uh, you know, we are. 
We are small. We are a small town. Yeah, and we don't have tornadoes. We have earthquakes and horrible fires. We have earthquakes, fires, and droughts. We don't have tornadoes. You have earthquakes out there in Oklahoma, though. You have a ton of them. For, for, oh, you're fracking, right? Oh, yeah. I'm familiar. You, I think last year, you, Oklahoma City passed up uh, Northern California in terms of the number of earthquakes they have annually. You don't get a, bigger ones, but you're getting bigger ones now. Yeah, yeah. No, I've heard, I've actually uh, watched a documentary and I read up on that. I d I don't know how I ended up there, but Oklahoma City is a is a cool little place. I'll tell you when we because I was there like a year ago, and um, we went to um, the Oklahoma City Memorial. I uh, that was one of the most powerful things I've ever seen in my life. I I me and Frank walked through there and we both came out with tears in our eyes. It was overwhelming. When it, when it showed you, because they, they put those chairs where uh, they believe people fell, and then you had all those chairs of the kids that are concentrated right. in one area. And then when you come to the realization that those chairs are smaller than the other ones, it's, um, right. you know, I don't know if you're a parent or not, but you, you have kids, oh, yeah. and you start seeing that stuff, and it starts to hit home, and it, it starts to shake you. What they did there was ex ex extremely powerful um, message, and it has a massive impact on people. And at least it did for me and Frank. It was it was rough. Yeah, yeah, it was an amazing, amazing experience. You know, all the crew pulled together when we got here. We showed the testimony of the country of how many people came to us. You know, it was just it's a testament. To, it's a testament to the. If I'm going to screw this up, but for those of you who've never been to the Oklahoma City uh, Memorial, it's it'll stop you in your tracks. It's pretty. Yeah. It. But what I really like about it, what I thought was, because um, if if for those of you who are watching right now, you walk through and they have a chair for every person who perished in uh, that bombing, and then there's a, and it's roughly where they perished, and so there's a concentration of smaller chairs where they had that nursery there. It's it's rough, but as you walk in one side, and you walk out the other, what was interesting? I don't know the dates or times, but you walk in and it said, "Here's when the attack happened," and they have that. At the opening of the monument, when you walk through it, and then when you walk out the other side, it says, this is when it happened, and then at the end it said, here's when we began to heal. It was a couple of seconds later, and it, spo right. and it spoke to the strength of the folks in Oklahoma City that right after that happened, as you guys uh, recognized that, mo you identified that moment as, you know, healing as a community, and it just, it, 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 it it, did, it has a big impact on you. It's something I wish I wish uh, you know I wish my kids could see. I wish everybody in the country could see see that. Anyways, didn't mean to take this in a dark spot. Yeah, well, it's it's a uh, one of the monuments that we have that we don't want to talk about. <laughs> That's a problem. Yeah, yeah. Well, you got a great community, man. Got some good food out there. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll let you go now. I've kept you for a, uh, I By the way, and thank you, Chris. I uh, really appreciate you letting me do this with you. Um, I know we had a couple other folks on here. For those watching live on Facebook, thanks for uh, jumping in with us. Uh, you can hit us up at listingbooster.com. Uh, Chris, I'll have somebody reach out to you now. We'll find out a way to get you going. And, um, and with that said, I hope one day I can meet you. Uh, you too. Hey, Brian, appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Enjoy watching the show. All right, thank you so much. You have a great day. Bye. Bye, you too. I, I dig people from the Midwest. There's like a certain sensibility, don't you think? I dig people from the Midwest. It's just like, there's just a sensibility. You know, I like the sensibility. It's a sensibility about people. I, I, there ain't no Nancy Pelosi's. And, no Nancy Pelosi's. And, 
I don't know, Maxine Waters, they don't, that, that dog didn't hunt in the Midwest. Oh, shit. Oh, I think I'm still going alive. 